What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs. Got eat. We're ripping into August. We're whipping, whipping, ripping, whipping, ripping into draft season. So as things happen quickly throughout these summer months, you know, training camp, beat reports, research, whatever it may be, there, there are guys that are going to move quickly up and down my rankings. And I'm here to talk about three of them today. They're basically three guys who have I found myself when I'm on the clock and their ADP hits sitting there at pick 32 or whatever, and their name is there, you're hesitant to click, you pass them by, and it doesn't feel good. You know, deep down, you're like, fuck, I should have hit the draft button on these guys. I'm going to regret it later on. That's how I'm feeling about these three players. Three players I feel like I've been wrong on so far this summer, in which I am changing my tune for the better, and I'm telling y'all to be drafting these three players. We got one running back, we got two wide receivers okay so with that being said if you're new here subscribe to the channel please god please if you're listening help hit the thumbs up button let's tuck your shirts in you still there stop yelling and let's eat First player up on this list is Mr. Najee Harris. Pittsburgh Steelers, man. I just love everything that I'm seeing, everything that I'm hearing out of Steelers camp. There have been no hiccups. Everything is wildly positive. Everything. Every time I see him on video, I'm just like, I like this dude more and more. Maybe it's a bias thing, but I just think he's a phenomenal player. I think he has a three down skill set. And I just see no fathomable, fathomable path in which he finishes outside of the top 12 fantasy running backs this year, just based on, on volume alone. And again, like everything out of Pittsburgh's camp has basically just been straight up boner inducing, bro. And he's just a Trojan workhorse that's ready to bust the fuck out. And these are the, the types of guys that we need to be drafting. I mean, the Steelers told you how much they like this guy by using their first round pick on him. OK, and now you're attached to a coach. You have a three down skill set. You're 225 pounds. You're attached to a coach who has been insistent on using a featured running back throughout his entire career. Le'Veon Bell, James Conner. D'Angelo Williams, even though some of y'all, I'm old enough to remember, barely, Rashard Mendenhall, Willie Parker, all of those dudes give me the confidence to know that Mike Tomlin wants to use a workhorse running back. I think Najee Harris is going to see 350 plus opportunities without a doubt. If you look back at all those guys I just listed, I want to go through their, you know, all of them have had seasons of 22 or more opportunities per game under Mike Tomlin. Uh, Willie Parker, 23 and a half opportunities per game, 2007. Mendenhall had a 22.2 opportunity per game season. Bell, obviously, as a rookie, came in and averaged 23.8 opportunities per game, okay? Even Bell averaged 23.8 opportunities per game as a rookie. He also had seasons of 24.7, 23.2, 29.6, 28.5. James Conner, 22 opportunities per game in the one season he was the workhorse. D'Angelo Williams, once left Bell, went down in that one season, averaged over 21.7 opportunities. It's just, it's, just, it's just very, very fucking clear what we have here in terms of volume. So you're drafting him at his volume floor for the most part. The offensive line is certainly going to be a problem this year, right? I expect Najee Harris's involvement in the passing game. I expect an easy 55 plus targets out of this kid, okay? To more than make up for the lack of efficiency in the low rushing total. I don't even know if it's going to be that low, to be honest with you. I just know the yards per carry will not really be there over the long run. That's going to hurt him because he'll end up with 850 rushing yards instead of 1150 or you know what I mean, like shit like that. Harris is an excellent pass catcher. Over the last two years at Alabama, he caught a combined 70 passes for 729 yards and 11 receiving touchdowns. That can't be overstated. And you look back at last year, like if James Conner and Benny Snell combined to score 10 times on the ground last year with zero receiving touchdowns, I'm pretty sure behind the same off, basically the same offensive line, Najee Harris can sniff double digit scores. Okay. They use their first round pick on him because they don't want Ben throwing the ball 42 times a game anymore. They are going to give this kid 20 plus opportunities right off the rip. And just anyone who's getting that type of volume is a, a phenomenal, phenomenal fantasy running back playing three downs, catching passes, being the goal line back. I mean, they were top 12 in scoring last year as an offense. They, it's not like they can't do it again. It's a good coaching staff, a good team, a good franchise that drafts good players. And Najee Harris is next up. So I will no longer be hesitating. I'm pulling the trigger on Najee Harris. Same thing with Mr. Terry McLaurin. 
the Washington football team alpha wide receiver out there. Current ADP, super flex leagues around pick 44, 45. On underdog, around pick 28, 29. So bona fide third, fourth round pick right now in fantasy drafts. He's just straight up goaded, bro. He's one of the, the most fun players to watch. And I remember going into last season, my comp for him, right? Coming off the rookie year, I was so high on Terry last going into last year. I was like, basically, this is Robert Woods that runs a 4-3-5. Okay? And I was right. I was probably actually wrong because he's actually better than that. When you look at his success rate, you know, this is under Matt Harmon's reception perception, his success rate versus man coverage, 97th percentile. Okay. That doesn't leave a lot of room. That's in, that's in the historical data of reception perception, 90th verse press. He is just so good against every type of coverage. The reason, the reason that we're hesitant to pull the trigger on Terry is they added weapons. Okay. They add Curtis Samuel, to play the wide receiver two role. They draft Yami Brown to play the wide receiver three role. Both great ads by them, in my opinion. I think both of them are going to be key players in this offense. Terry, if you look at that chart, was double teamed on nearly 13% of his routes last year, or at least the routes that Matt charted, okay? 30% is a very high number. There are only three players in the NFL that were double teamed on more routes than Terry McLaurin last year. That was DeAndre Hopkins, that was Tyreek Hill, and that was Stefan Diggs. That's a pretty fucking elite list okay adding curtis samuel adding diami brown gonna help out in that double coverage sense you're not gonna be able to do that when you have guys like curtis samuel and diami brown both great deep threats spreading the defense out okay the real hesitancy for me comes from the other factor at play here ryan fitzpatrick is now the quarterback in washington it can be a match made in heaven though this is the biggest reason i haven't pulled the trigger is because we don't really know we're gonna get out of fits like we like to just say this is a perfect you know they're like two Play-Dohs that just get smushed together and everything works out perfectly and maybe they'll dry up and become a disgusting color. That's the hesitancy there because Ryan Fitzpatrick, anytime he's had a good season, which has been like a total of two seasons, basically, maybe one and a half if you count last year, it's always coming out of nowhere. Like we don't expect him to be good and then he's good. Anytime we expect him to be good coming off a big season, I feel like he disappoints. But the upside here is if Ryan Fitzpatrick is fine, if he's good, if he doesn't get benched, if he doesn't have four interception games, and he's somewhat accurate like he was last year, Terry's going to explode. And we've seen historically Ryan Fitzpatrick make some very, very top-heavy fantasy wide receivers explode, okay? So Terry could absolutely be next up. And when we look, I mean, it can't get any worse than what Terry had last year, right? 75th in catchable target rate, 69th in overall target quality, which takes into account the distance and how far down the field those targets were, et cetera, et cetera. So we had really, really bad quarterback play. Doesn't, I didn't need to fucking give you analytics in order to quantify that for you. We look at Fitz last year. He was top three amongst all quarterbacks in completion percentage on deep balls. And I just, I don't know. Terry's just an elite route runner, an elite separator. Uh, he can very, very much have a blowout year this year. And I think just given that upside, I think he's like, I think he's like Calvin Ridley, but you're getting him a round or two rounds later. I think both of those guys are sort of must draft players at this point because of how good they are at route running and just how, how alpha they are compared to everybody else on the team and the number of targets and the target share. And Terry McLaurin was fourth in air yard share last year, 13th in unrealized air yard. So still a lot of meat left on the bone for your boy, Terry. Uh, so Terry is a guy that I will no longer be hesitating to pull the trigger on late third, early fourth round. He is a uh, savage in every sense of the word, as is Brandon Ayuk out in San Francisco. I just, I just, I'm done thinking too hard about this one. And I'm going to get into Brandon Ayuk's breakdown real quick. I want you to know that the underdog giveaway is still wide open. If you guys have not downloaded the underdog fantasy app, it's the first link in the description. It's where you do your best ball drafts. It's where you prepare, right? It's the best place to draft for your fantasy football season. But more importantly, they're doing a giveaway. We are giving away one spot in the BDGE NYC draft weekend. If you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, go to my channel, type in BDGE NYC vlog. Okay. It's a crazy fucking weekend. It's happening August 27th to the 29th here in Manhattan. 11 of you subscribers are coming out. We're chilling. We're throwing a party Friday night for my birthday. We're doing a live fantasy football draft. It's a high stakes league that we're all getting into together. Crazy, 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 crazy weekend out in NYC. If you've never been, this is a fantastic opportunity for me to absolutely fucking ruin your idea of Manhattan in your own mind. All you have to do is literally download the underdog fantasy app. When you deposit $10 on there first time, you're going to get 25 free dollars on top of it when you use the promo code BDGE. So you're going to get 35 dollars to do your best ball drafts with plus a free entry into the giveaway underdog is completely paying for one slot in that weekend that weekend is a very expensive weekend typically they're amazing people over there underdog so they're giving away one slot in that weekend for y'all incredulous incredible insert other synonyms for whatever it is. So Underdog Fantasy, the link to the app will be right down below. Click it. It'll take you to the app store. Download it. When you deposit $10, make sure you use the promo code BDGE and you will be entered into the last spot in the league's giveaway. Boom. Let's talk about Brandon motherfreaking Ayuk. Again, I'm just not going to think too hard about this one. As a pure receiver, there's a lot going on in San Fran, but as a pure receiver, Ayuk 
over Debo. It's Ayuk over Debo. I don't think it's close. Debo is a great athlete. Debo is going to be fine because Kyle Shanahan is going to use him to perfection, but he's not a great outside wide receiver. He's a yak guy. He's not a separator. Uh, and not only is Ayuk better than Debo as an outside wide receiver, as a separator, as a route runner, he's actually just all around really good at it. Like he's, he would be the one in almost every offense. You know, you, you throw him on Washington, he's not better than Terry McLaurin, but Brandon Ayuk can hold his fucking own about just uh, against just about any wide receiver in the league in terms of separation and in terms of route running. And again, I can't give away every one of Matt Harmon's reception perception charts. So y'all are going to go have to head over to the site, receptionperception.com, support the man, get his charts, get all the data. But he ended Ayuk profile by saying, and I quote, after his rookie season reception perception results, I'm ready to put Ayuk on the Stefan Diggs, Calvin Ridley, Terry McLaurin access in the wide receiver typology. If you've been following the series for long enough, you know what that means. When Matt Harmon loves a dude, when Matt Harmon's success rate is as high as Ayuk's in his charts, it's almost always a fucking hit. Okay. And there are very valid arguments to be made against Ayuk. He produced when Debo and I and, and Kittle were hurt for most of the year. This is going to be a run first offense. If Trey Lance is under center, that's even more rushing going to the quarterbacks and the running backs. You know, a mobile quarterback typically doesn't help the outside wide receivers. And these are all arguments that I've made myself at one point or another during the summer. But man, this is going to be a very good team and he's going to be the, the best outside weapon that they have. And that alone should warrant his like fifth, sixth round ADP as the wide receiver 25. I think that's the crazy part. Like, I don't see a, a world where he finishes as underneath the wide receiver 25. And I think his, he's not just like a floor play. I think his ceiling is really, really high as like a, a an elite outside wide receiver. You look at over the last half of 2020, the dude was unstoppable. Anyone who owned Ayuk last year, the second half of last year, you guys remember how fucking good he was. Anyone who owned Ayuk last year in redraft leagues, I would bet is not letting that man slide past him, past them in drafts this year. Women, men, whoever the fuck is drafting. Doesn't matter. Ayuk is not getting past you in the drafts, fifth, sixth round, okay? He was a decoy in week 17 because of his ankle. Played on like a very, 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 very limited role. But in all of the games leading up to week 17 over the second half of last year, starting in week seven, I want to read you his stat lines, okay, consecutively. Seven targets, six catches, 115 yards. That's starting in week seven. 11 targets, eight catches, 91 yards, and a touchdown. 14 targets, seven catches, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Nine targets, five catches, 95 yards, and a touchdown. 16 targets, 10 catches, 119 yards. 13 targets, nine catches, 73 yards, and a touchdown. Again, these are consecutive games played by Ayuk. This was in the middle of dealing with a hamstring tweak and having COVID. It's unbelievable. Like, he's already a great player who has produced at a very high level on an NFL field with superb, superb. Mm superb route running and separation skills on an offense that has a very, very high ceiling, guys. This feels like something that we're, we're digging too deep into about why we shouldn't be drafting him when he already showed us reasons, like a billion reasons why we should be, okay? So Ayuk, a guy I need to be drafting way more of. I don't really care what price tag he has at this point. Fifth round, sixth round, whatever it is, get your hands on more Ayuk, get your hands on the Underdog Fantasy app, underdogfantasy.com, or just download the app. It'll be the first link in the description. Thank you all for supporting the channel. As always, use that promo code BDGE when you do deposit 10 bucks on Underdog, and you're depositing. They're not just mock drafts. You're actually playing in real leagues when you're on Underdog, right? $3, $5, $10 buy-ins, and the top three places win. You don't do any in-season management, which is the beautiful part about it. But the most beautiful part is obviously you get a spot in the giveaway for the weekend. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing videos literally every single day of the week leading up to your fantasy football drafts. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Love you. Bye.